Hey guys, Chris from adapt vision here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution to question 1 from the Jan 2012 PUA Paper 2. If you want to check out the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it reads that the accountant of VIP Enterprises prepares the following trial balance as at the 30th of November 2011. Okay, so we have this trial balance here and we're seeing it balances as 393300 on both the debit and credit side. We have quite a few items, so we have premises, capital, vehicles, equipment, five-year bank loan, closing inventory. Now, normally, closing inventory or closing stock is given to us as part of the additional information. So if you see it in a trial balance, it means that what you are looking at is actually something called an adjusted trial balance. And I'll show you a couple other things inside of here too that also confirm what I'm saying. Bank deposit fixed for the next two years. That's interesting because normally bank items are current assets. But if it's fixed for two years, that's an asset that's going to last for two years. So that's actually going to be a non-current asset. Then we have cash, we have debtors, we have creditors. Aha! These were the two items I was talking about just now. We have prepaid insurance and rent owing. So again, just like closing stock, prepaid insurance and rent owing are normally given to us in the additional information section below the trial balance. But if you see prepayments and insurance included in a trial balance, that means, like I said before, this is an adjusted trial balance and they've already been adjusted for. So that means when you're doing your income statement, you won't have to make adjustments for prepaid and accrued items because they would have already been adjusted for. All right, what else do we have here? We have drawings, we have sales, cost of sales. So they've already done a big piece of calculation here for us by finally cost of sales. So we don't have that piece of working to do. Then we have miscellaneous expenses and capital introduced during the year. That's an interesting item. All right, so the first thing they want us to do is to prepare VIP Enterprises income statement for the year ended 30th November 2011. And that's only for four marks. And we'll see why. Because we really only have these three items to go in it. The sales, the cost of sales, and the miscellaneous expenses. So even though you only have a few items to go inside of it, please don't forget to head up your statement properly, right? So the name of the entity, the name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. So of course, the first thing we are going to put is the sales figure of 123620 From that, we are going to subtract the cost of sales, which is the item just below that, 45700 When we do so, we're going to get a gross profit of 77920 and the only thing left to do is to subtract our miscellaneous expenses of 52400 to give us a net income of 25520 Okay, that's it for part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so part B is asking us to prepare the classified balance sheet for VIP Enterprises as at 30th November 2011 in vertical style, identifying clearly the business's working capital. So, I know in recent years, CSEC POA has been kind of veering towards doing statements of financial position balance sheets in either the, well, in the order of permanence or liquidity and in your net asset format. So either assets minus liabilities or assets on top and capital plus liabilities below. But working capital is also something that you should be able to show and that's current assets minus current liabilities. So let's pull up our trial balance. And we're also going to take a look at the format on this side. Now, I'm going to do this balance sheet two ways. I'm going to do it where I have all my assets and liabilities on top. And then I'm going to show you where I have assets and just the current liabilities on top. And then below, the capital plus the non-current liabilities. So I'm going to do this two ways. So, of course, please don't forget to head up. Um, I'm using the old heading here, balance sheet, as, as opposed to statement of financial position. So just bear with me. Okay, so the first item in order of permanence is your non-current assets. So across in the trial balance, we know what we have premises, we have vehicles and equipment, and we also have this bank deposit fixed for the next two years. So let's populate those items inside of this section, premises, vehicles, equipment, bank deposit fixed for two years, and we're going to get a subtotal. Next, we're going to deal with the current assets. So of course, we know we have closing inventory, that's stock. We have debtors as well. We have a prepaid insurance expense of 390 and I'm also seeing cash here as well. 
So I think it's just those four items. Let's take a look and populate. So inventory, debtors, prepaid expenses, cash, and we're going to have a subtotal for current assets. Now, remember, they want us to show working capital or net working capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities. So I'm now going to do my current liability section. So there were only a couple of current liabilities. We had creditors of 23,000 and we had the rent owing of 1,080. So we're just going to put those two items in, right? Da, da, da. Subtotal 24,080 and we're going to subtract that 24,080 from the current asset subtotal of 32,970 to get the net working capital, which is something that they asked for specifically, 8710. We're now going to add that to the non-current asset subtotal on top there to get 268,220. And we're also going to subtract the non-current liabilities. Well, we only have one, so it's a non-current liability. The five-year bank loan, 25,600. So we're going to put that there. Subtracting that from the above figure gives us our net assets, total assets minus total liabilities of 242,620. Now, how are we paying for those assets? Well, assets have to be financed somehow. And if that's it, net assets, it means it's financed by capital. So we know our capital section. We're going to start with the capital balance at start, 200,000. So let's put that in here. Now, we are going to add our net profit. So don't forget our net profit from, previous, from the previous part of the question, sorry, was 25,520. There's also one other thing to add, which is given to us across here in the trial balance, which is capital introduced during the year, 20,000. So if the owner puts in additional capital, the owner's capital is increasing. So we're going to add all those together and get a subtotal of 245,520. Now that subtotal is optional. You don't have to have it, but I like to have a subtotal showing the capital before I subtract my drawings figure of 2,900 and that's going to give me my capital balance at the end of 242,620 which if you check it out matches with the net asset total. So assets minus liabilities on top is equal to capital. Okay so as I mentioned before I am going to show you another way we could have done this balance sheet so just give me one sec to flip around some stuff and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so like I mentioned, we're going to do the same balance sheet, VIP Enterprises balance sheet, as at November 30th, 2011. But we're going to do it with assets on top, uh, with, with current liabilities, and then below we're going to have capital and non-current liabilities. So let's start with the non-current assets, and we have those four items already given to us here. Uh, we're going to put the current assets now, we're going to put those in that column. And we are once again going to subtract the current liabilities to show the networking capital because they specifically asked us in the question to show that networking capital figure. So that total there now is 260,220. And that has to be financed by capital and non current liabilities. So the capital section doesn't change from the previous iteration of the balance sheet. We're still going to get a balance at the end of 242,620. But now we are going to add the non-current liability of the five-year bank loan to that 242,620 to get a total here for capital and non-current liabilities of 268,220, which of course matches with the figure on top here and your balance sheet balances. Okay, great. Let's take a look at the final part of the question. Okay, so the question tells us in 2010, VIP Enterprises recorded a closing inventory of 5,780. Now, 2010 was the previous year because we are currently dealing with 2011. Using this information, as well as information from the trial balance, calculate the following ratios for VIP Enterprises show you're working. So we have two things to calculate for four marks in total, stock turnover or rate of stock turnover and return on opening capital employed, ROCE. So the rate of stock turnover is your cost of goods sold divided by your average stock. So we could pull cost of sales from the trial balance. They give it to us here, 45,700. So we're going to put that there and we have to divide by average stock. Now, how do you find average stock? So you're going to take your opening stock plus your closing stock and divide by two. The opening stock in, from this year was last year's closing stock and that was given to us in this paragraph down here where they told us in 2010 VIP Enterprises recorded a closing inventory of 5780. So that's the closing inventory in 2010 which means it's the opening inventory for the following year which is the year we are currently dealing with. And then the closing inventory for the current year was given to us in the balance sheet of 12,005. So we're going to take 5780, add the 12, 5, and then divide by 2. And you see in that working here, average stock 
5780 plus 125 divided by 2, giving us 9140. And when we divide, we're going to get 5 times. So the rate of stock turnover is how many times during the course of the year the entity sold out its average stock. So it's selling its average stock about 5 times for the year. So that's a little over every 2 months. Okay, so the next thing they want us to calculate is the return on opening capital employed. Now, the return on capital is a measure of the owner's return on their investment. As in, what did the owner get back as a percentage of what they invested? So it's like if you invest some money and you get interest on your investment. When you take your interest and you express it as a percentage of what you invested, your principal amount, that's the return on your investment, what you get back. Right? The return is what you get back, your interest. Now, in this case, the owner of the entity gets back profit or net income. So your profit kind of comes like the interest on the owner's investment, the owner's capital investment. So the net income, as per the income statement that we did in the first part of the question, is 25520 And we're going to divide that by the opening capital that they gave to us in the trial balance of 200000 so 25,520 divided by 200,000 will simply give us 12.76 express as a percentage, right? So I didn't do the multiply by 100 because it's kind of understood. Okay, and they didn't ask us for any interpretation, so we're going to stop and end the question right there. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the Jan 2012 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where I have some very useful handouts, well, PUA handouts just for you. Okay, guys, so as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.